Armistice Day, the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month. And uh, I do actually have a little private minute silence to myself and think of all those brave men and women of all colours, nationalities and religions who, who laid down their lives to, to stop the Nazis getting into to Britain and to help drive them back in the rest of Europe. Proper Nazis, these animals who killed the, the Jews en masse and anyone who was in front of them. Not the sort of Nazis that you get these idiots on Twitter and on Facebook calling people because they've got an alternative view to them. Not them Nazis. Not them Nazis. Oh, he disagrees with me. He's a Nazi. Oh, he, he don't think we should have open borders. Oh, he voted against Brexit. Not those Nazis. Proper, proper Nazis. Those who would bayonet you if you, if you weren't on their side. Those that would do experiments on kids and torture men and try all sorts of Frankenstein type surgeries on, on people and make lampshades out of Jews' skins. Proper, proper Nazis. And all those brave men and women, as I say, from all over who died to stop that sort of monstrous machine coming to the shores of the UK. So that nearly 80 years later, people can sit at their computer and call people Nazis. He said hurty words to me, he's a Nazi. So I do genuinely have a minute's silence to myself and, and in my head I thank those people. Brave fathers, sons, mothers, daughters, uncles, brothers. War wasn't sort of like it is now, it was much more primeval. Yeah, thank you to them, I thought. And for me at least, whether you agree with all the COVID rhetoric or whether you agree with the vaccines or whether you, like I, like I did, saw that Pfizer and AstraZeneca were involved and knowing their, knowing their track record for being fined for basically lying and poor marketing and causing harm all over the place. I was a little bit concerned about these new vaccines that seem to be whipped up overnight for this disease that had a, uh, a mortality rate of far less than 1%. I was a little bit concerned. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna tell anyone not to get vaccinated. I wasn't gonna say I knew more than I did because I didn't, but I was concerned. I was concerned, and because I was concerned, I was an anti-vaxxer. And a couple of my friends who had both the vaccines, they were anti-vaxxers as well, because they didn't want a booster. But my point is, those men and women who died to give us a free country, and the way the police acted during COVID, and the way the government acted and the way the broadcasters acted, you know, the Piers Morgans of this world, who basically wanted unvaccinated people in concentration camps, they showed me just how Hitler managed to indoctrinate a whole nation against the Jews. The unvaccinated were the new Jews. And as every day goes by now and things unfold and we can see there possibly are harmful effects, more and more people realise just how bad things were during that time. And the police, they on the whole acted like the Stasi. We're not looking to find people, but we will be if there are people in clear breach of the legislation. And they don't have to look for too long. In this park in Poplar, 
there's an outdoor gym where four men are spotted exercising. We've got a right. We deserve to work out. We ain't doing nothing wrong. But the police take a different view and follow and then stop the men as they leave. To issue you a fine under the coronavirus uh, regulations. £200, £100 in favour in 2020. The men can still challenge the fines. The police, though, believe regulations were broken. Tell me the law that I have broken by being here today. Tell me what law I have broken. You cannot tell me any law that I've broken. Listen to me. The law he's broken is that protesters can't meet in groups of more than two under current emergency coronavirus legislation. And he was in a group of three protesters outside King's Cross Station. So, yeah, it was Armistice Day, and the first thing I saw on the news, well, it wasn't on the actual mainstream news, on the alternative news I saw it, was uh, mainstream caught up later. I think it got too big to suppress. Was that a photographer, Tom Bowles, a press photographer, accredited, got his press pass from the chief constable in the area that he was working, and a documentary maker, Rich Felgate, were arrested by Hertfordshire police for filming a, a, a Just Stop Oil protest. Put it somewhere. So what, what are you doing? At the moment, you're under arrest. So why? Can I just help you? Okay, I'm a press, I'm a member of the press. Can I give you three Can, you can I show you my press card? You you Sorry, arrest. officer, you, you can't arrest me. No, because I'm here, I'm here as a member of the press. Um, and, I'm, 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 I don't know what you mean. And I watched the footage of it and I saw the police officer and Tom Bowles was perfectly reasonable and yet the police officer wouldn't listen. And I just thought to myself, what is happening? The police don't police with public consent anymore. They become political pawns. They choose when to police in a certain way and when not to. And it's frightening. Tom Bowles getting arrested and he's got a press pass on him, but the police officer won't look at it. I wonder if that police officer has ever turned up at someone's home to investigate a burglary. Unlikely, I know. But he's turned up at someone's home and uh, you'd be scared to answer the door. Because you'd be there, he'd knock on the door and he'd say, there's a burglary going on at this residence. You'd say, yeah, it's the geezer over there with a swag bag in a stripy shirt with a balaclava on. And he'd say, don't think it is. Come on, you're under arrest. Idiot. Some wise person once told me we've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Well, that police officer certainly doesn't know in which order to use them. There was another journalist arrested on the same day as well, a female journalist. Probably the same, probably the same officer. But no, shocking, shocking policing. The sort of policing that we've witnessed during COVID with no discretion, no common sense, just Stasi like, boom, I've been told that, bang. Not allowing pensioners to sit on a bench together. Making sure people are two metres apart. Arresting people that are walking their dogs. We had it all during COVID. Absolutely crazy. We had it all while, whilst Boris and Matt Hancock and everyone were partying and jiggy-jigging all over the show. Unbelievable stuff. Where you put your left arm in, your left arm At least Ancott wasn't lying when he said he he was hard at work. It's rumoured he told her not to shave her old lady. He wanted to practice for the Bush Ducker trials. So it took me back to 1982 when I stood in a courtroom in Bedford with one hand on a Bible and one hand in the air and I said I do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will willfully and truthfully serve the Queen in the office of Constable. With fairness and integrity, remember that one? Diligence and impartiality. Oh, upholding fundamental human rights 
and according equal respect to all people. And I will, to the best of my power, some people have got better powers than others, haven't they? Cause the peace to be kept and preserved and prevent all offences against people and property. And that while I continue to hold the said office, I will, to the best of my skill and knowledge, discharge all the duties thereof faithfully according to the law. Some of the stuff I've seen lately, I don't think anyone said that. I don't think anyone's ever stood in a court and said that. Some of these police must just stand there and say, oh, I'll do my best, but I'm not very good. I've got no common sense and I'm a bit of an arse. I'm a bit of a violent arse. <laughs> I pledge to be a violent arse for the king. The shocking brutality that earned a police sergeant a criminal conviction Pamela Somerville was brought into Melksham Police Station in Wiltshire after being found asleep in her car and failing to provide a sample of her breath. Custody Sergeant Mark Andrews, a former soldier, was caught on CCTV, grabbing hold of her in the station lobby and dragging her across the floor. He then shoved her into a cell where she collapsed. Ms Somerville, then aged 57, was filmed lying on the floor before struggling to get up with blood pouring from her head. Another person examined the wound and she was later taken to hospital and given stitches. Another officer reported 37-year-old Andrew's behaviour following the incident in July 2008. He was eventually convicted of assault causing actual bodily harm after a trial at Oxford Magistrates Court. He'll be sentenced on Tuesday. Whatever punishment magistrates decide on, he's likely to lose his job. They've not, they've not pledged that same... That same oath as I did, they can't have done. When I look back at, uh, oh, by the way, by the way, to Tom Bowles' ordeal wasn't, wasn't over. There he is, he's got his legal press pass. Police aren't listening to him. They've arrested him, God knows what for, I don't know. They've arrested him and uh, for being in possession of a camera on a bridge. But they, um, they took him away He's been held in some cells for 14 hours. And just to compound it, at night, at night, it's a knock on his door. He's not in, he's in the cell. He's been interviewed. And the, it's the police. And they search his house. His wife's there. His 14-year-old daughter's there. 11.30 at night, they search his house. I don't know if they had a warrant. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> These people don't seem to don't seem to know the law. <laughs> also, there is no law against urinating in a public convenience <laughs> or coughing without due care and attention. If you say so, sir. Yes, I do say so, Savage. <laughs> Did they teach you anything at training school? Oh, sorry, sir. Some of the they just seem to make the law up as they go along. Some of these cases are just plain stupid. Looking at me in a funny way. <laughs> Is this some kind of joke, Savage? No, sir. He was released without charge. So, it's not a case of there's loads of evidence against you. They'll just go round your house and they'll search you. Again, that happened, lo that happened loads of times during COVID. What is wrong with these people? During COVID, we had the Black Lives Matter demonstrations. You'll remember them. You'll remember them. Didn't matter about the COVID laws. Police were actually kneeling to this protest on... The admittedly shameful death, horrible death, of George Floyd in the States. Which came about, I think it was six months after a white guy, Tony Temper, had died in exactly the same way in the United States. But hadn't got anywhere near as much press. Speaking to you from my heart. Look, I don't know if I'm going to have a career after this. Today, it's about innocent people 
who were halfway through their process. We don't know what George Floyd could have achieved. John Boryager saying, oh, we'll never know what, what George Floyd would have achieved if he'd lived. Well, I think we can guess, John. I think it would probably be another prison sentence and probably mugging another pregnant woman. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But that's possibly what he would have achieved. But there are lots of black and white people and in the States they seem to have a real problem with racism with their police. Right. Where are you going so fast? Oh, I'm just going right here to my house. You got your license on you? I have my license. Okay. So you're not supposed to be even driving with all these people, right? So why are you driving like that? Hey, we're secure. Stop out. No, can you stop my out? Way? You're under arrest. Get out of the car. Go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Hey, get in the car. Get in the car. Nevaeh, record this. Nevaeh, record this. Keep your hands up. Record what? You resisting arrest, dumbass? And anyone else want to be Don't stupid? Don't even arrest me. I'm You're not, under arrest. How about that? I'm not arrest me. Yeah, yeah. Can you are. record this, sir, please? Can one of y'all record this at the store? I'm only 17 years old. Can one of y'all record this, please? Thank you. They just dragged me on my car. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate And they got a gun. These people in the car are kids. They 14 years old. Yes. And 15 years old. Yes. And he got a gun. Then when you get out of the car, when you I tell you. No, I can't. You put your gun down, they got a, he has a gun to these kids. He has but they've also got a real problem full stop. Remember that said Tony Timper. But these demonstrations, you had Auntie Joshua out there making anti-white speeches. He didn't write it though. He didn't write it, so it doesn't matter. But he was out there and, uh, and it was during COVID. And nothing was done about these, about these. To be fair, to be fair, they were, they were mainly peaceful. They were mainly peaceful demonstrations. You ask the BBC, you ask the, uh, the mainstream news, mainly peaceful. Only 20 odd police officers injured. It was, it was mainly peaceful. As opposed to the anti-lockdown demonstrations that were pleased in such a way an MP, Charles Walker, who happened to see a 70-year-old woman being bundled in the back of a police van by about six police in handcuffs, was shocked. Are you doing something? I'm a member of Parliament. This is an absolute disgrace. This is a disgrace. She's an old lady. You don't need to, you don't need to obey any legal orders as police officers. You must have mothers. What an outrage! Exactly. What a disgrace! Hope you're listening to him. Yeah, exactly. You lost your bloody heart. Following orders like Nuremberg. I wasn't shocked by this point of the pandemic. I just thought, oh my god, this is a test. This is to see how much us lot will take. This is just to see how much us lot will take. It was crazy, absolutely crazy. And you get individual police who are nutcases because all the police force is a, is a representation of general society, but it does tend to attract 90% great people. I worked with some great men and women whose only, only focus in life was going out and making people safer and the world better. In my naivety, that's why I joined. When I saw that couldn't be done, I left. But it does attract bullies. There's 5% of them. We used to talk about 5% of shitbags in society, which has probably gone up to about 10% now. People that don't care about anyone. Don't care about their kids, don't care about anyone else's property. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. You know that you know what I'm talking about. Those that walk around Tesco in their pajamas. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. But it's five percent of police, maybe more, I don't know. He started shouting, Why are you following me, you fucking slag? 
He repeatedly tried to get me on the floor, got me round the neck, screaming, shouting very aggressively. It's July last summer and Emma Homer is walking home after an evening out with friends when a drunk man she has never met approaches Emma and violently assaults her. Emma later discovers that that man is 25-year-old PC Oliver Banfield, an off-duty police officer. I had to investigate myself, really, and um, then it turns out that with a little bit of digging, I found out that there was a police officer um, called Ollie that lived in the corner a few yards from my house, and who else could it have been, you know? Were you shocked to learn that the man who attacked you was a police officer? That was the scariest thing because that's when it, that's how it's really affected me in terms of my family and my mental health, really. Tonight, we can reveal Warwickshire police were, by their own admission, slow to act. That changed when this distressing CCTV footage of the attack was by chance captured by a neighbour. You can hear the officer using techniques he learnt in police training. It's an assault right there, on the floor now, on the floor now, on the floor now. You just saw you push your face, that is an assault. It follows a week when the conduct of police officers is under intense scrutiny in the UK. And this has had a big impact on your family. Yeah, that was that was really heartbreaking um, when my oldest um, would ask if there's a police car around, you know, the village or around our road. Mummy, is that him? Was that him? You know, and that's like, I need to reassure them that they're not all like that. Today, PC Banfield arrived for sentencing. He initially accused Emma of attacking him, but pled guilty after an investigation. He continued to work for West Midlands Police, albeit on restricted duty. In court, PC Banfield was ordered to pay £500 in compensation and sentenced to a 14-week nighttime curfew. He'll have an electronic tag fitted. As his solicitor said, he was sincerely sorry for what had happened. Outside, PC Banfield was less forthcoming. You've had a bit of time to reflect now. Do you regret what happened? Do you think this is the conduct of a police officer to attack a woman on her way home? Will you be standing down as a police officer? I've lived here all my life and, um, you know, I've never felt scared until obviously this has happened. The attack happened just yards from Emma's front door in the Warwickshire village she grew up in. It was almost like he was, like, pretending to be, like, in a cop film, you know. It was really like... And they, you know, on the phone, calling for backup and, you know, had me around the neck, you know, all the stuff that, you know, you, how a, an officer would arrest somebody, but over the top, like, you know, like he was in a film. Emma says it has been an uphill battle to get justice, and it was only down to the perseverance of her family that she did, made all the more upsetting by a series of delays. It took over 30 hours for the police to take a phone statement, over a week before she saw a police officer face to face, and eight weeks for officers to visit the scene, by which point Emma's family claim additional CCTV had been erased. They haven't taken me seriously from the minute I, I reported it. It was as if, you know, I was reporting a, a lost cat. Today, in a statement, Warwickshire Police said... We recognise the strength of feeling that has come about as a result of Sarah Everard's tragic death and understand concerns relating to violence against women and girls nationally. In relation to this specific case, we acknowledge that due to internal process errors, the initial response to the report of the assault was not as swift as it should have been, and an apology has been issued with regards to this. How victims of crime are treated is of paramount importance to Warwickshire Police, and we remain committed to protecting the most vulnerable people in our communities. Tonight, West Midlands Police told us PC Banfield has been suspended, while an investigation takes place into allegations of gross misconduct. On the floor now! The shocking CCTV comes as the Centre for Women's Justice issued a super complaint against the police after 46 women contacted them who felt severely let down by the police service after they'd reported domestic abuse committed by police officers and staff. Emma too is deeply disappointed with what she feels is a too lenient sentence for a police officer whose job was to protect people. I'm OK, but I'm not OK. Um... It's just, I've never suffered with anxiety before. I've never really understood it, to be honest. But until now, um, something like this, it just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's messed with me quite a bit. 
So that report from Minnie Stevenson. So at a time when police conduct is under scrutiny, how many police officers are offenders themselves? Simple answer, we don't actually know exactly. The Home Office and the National Police Chiefs Council don't publish statistics about officers convicted of crimes, but we can get some sense of the problem through other channels. Since 2017, the College of Policing has published an annual list of police officers dismissed for conduct or performance issues. And buried deep within the report, we see some very illuminating pieces of information. 31 police officers were dismissed for abuse of position for sexual purposes, 20 for assault, 12 for child sex offences, 11 for domestic abuse, and 17 officers dismissed for possession of indecent images. What we don't know is whether these dismissals led to criminal convictions in all these cases. I've had a couple of interactions with them that haven't been particularly good. I had the cheek to ask directions in London of a, there was a group of police and I got told to F off. Yeah, that was it, that was it. And uh, I thought to myself, well, I asked for directions. I, I understood how I implement them. <laughs> I F off and follow a map. But I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. And a sergeant, as I was walking away, came up to me and said, sorry, she's been a bit stressed today. Well, haven't we all? Haven't we all? So yeah, they, they're obviously attracting a different type of police officer than they, uh, than they were. But there's always been bullies attracted. You know, it, it, it's going to attract them, isn't it? It's going to attract that personality. You've just got to say it's down to, to poor selection at the uh, start that these people get in. They should be offed pretty quickly, but it doesn't look they are, like they are anymore. So it looks like the police are political pawns. Sometimes they're nil, sometimes they'll do the Macarena if it's uh, on the right occasion. But what they won't do anymore is actually police. Violent crime up 16% in the UK last year and the detection rate on burglaries, have a guess how much? 5%! 5 in every 100 burglaries aren't solved. And I know a couple of, of mates who have been burgled and they've not even had police attending. And when they have attended, they've never heard from them again. So this is, uh, this is police in 2022. What they will do though, what they will do though, is if you go online and you say hurty words to people, they'll treat you like a Nazi. The same as the hurty word lot, will treat you like a Nazi. You're a Nazi, oh, look what you said, look what you said. He's not allowed to give his views on a certain section of society, even if he's not being hateful, even if he's not being derogatory. He's not allowed to say it, they're hurty words. Not them, but the police look online. There's the famous case of Harry Miller, ex-police officer, who retweeted who retweeted tweets that were considered by the police at the time to be transphobic. Well, I'm not being funny, but let's say Harry Miller is transphobic, but he doesn't incite hatred. He doesn't abuse. He doesn't say hurty words, but you can turn anything into hurty words if your mind is twisted enough. You can. You can be offended by anything. So Harry Miller, he got arrested, got put in handcuffs and taken away because of retweeting a poem and other couple of tweets. Unbelievable. So the police can't investigate a burglary. They can't police knife crime, but hurty words is high on the agenda. Probably worse in Scotland with a hate law. You can be you can be arrested for saying anything if someone takes offence. So if you say, I don't think much of your coat, I hate that colour green, you're off in the back of a van with handcuffs on. 
And those men, women, died. Died to stop the Nazis getting here. They died to stop the Nazis getting here. And this is the society that we've got now. Being policed by this police force. Another veteran, Darren Brady, arrested for retweeting. Arrested. You know, when they posed, when, when that image was there, below it was about 20 or 30 similar swastikas made up of the Union Jacks. They lined them all up the same way, yeah? But none of them have been investigated. Guys, one day, if you haven't already. Um, they took me to Basingstoke Police Station, put me in a custody cell. Uh, one copper watched over me, then another one came in. Um, they said I'd be processed by the um, desk sergeant. Um, then probably after an hour or two, he came in and he said, he gave me an option. He said, you can either agree to talk to us now um, at an arranged date and we'll release you or you have to um, stay overnight, wait till your lawyer turns up and we'll question you anyway. Honestly, I was thinking, is it 1939? Is this the Gestapo? Literally, yeah. you know, I thought, what, what am I here for? This is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, um. While someone's being mugged, or someone's being threatened with a knife, like I know a couple of my friends were the other day, actually, they got off a bus because there was a madman on top of the bus with a knife out. But we're calling the police now. No, they'll be looking for hurty words. I just don't understand it. I really don't. Why are they doing this? Why aren't they policing the way Robert Peel wanted them to in the first place? And why are they allowing themselves as individuals to be used as political pawns? I'm not being funny. But if there's a woman standing in a group of three who's 78 years old, and I believe the other two were elderly, protesting non-violently against the COVID lockdowns, and I had a sergeant or inspector say, cuff her and roughly throw her in the back of that van, I'd say, I took an oath. I'm upholding basic fundamental human rights and I'm according equal respect to all people that's what I'd say even though you're part of a of a large group as one of my inspectors used to say the biggest gang in Britain you're still an individual and if you've got a mum if you've got a grandmother there's no way there's no way you could do that if you're if you're a normal Human being, there's no way you can do that. In the same way, you couldn't actually arrest someone for saying something, well, retweeting something someone else has said online. If it's inciting hate, yes. If it's inciting hate, yes. I, I remember Reese James, I was a Chelsea supporter. I remember Reese James getting loads of stick. I, I don't know what it was over. I don't know if he missed a penalty or what it was. I can't remember. It's happened a few times actually, and you see these racists who in 2022 can't get past skin colour. You get, you, there's black racist as well as white, but in 2022 you can't get past skin colour. Some of the things some of them BLM supporters said on Twitter, I, I could have spent all day reporting them. Would they have got nicked? Probably not, because it wouldn't have been politically viable. But the people who, who abuse like black footballers, yeah, they deserve. They deserve. They're inciting hate or they're, they're being racially abusive. Yeah, I've got no problem with that. No problem with it at all. Common sense. Common sense in that police force doesn't exist. So I just wanted to say, all you people who think it's all right for police to police the internet, arrest people for saying hurty words, be careful what you wish for. 
when you're calling people Nazis and fascists, have a little think, take a deep breath, stop, have a cup of coffee, and think, are they really a Nazi? Hopefully, hopefully, if deep down in your brain, you've got an iota of common sense, you'll say, do you know what? I find that offensive, but I'll scroll on. Because freedom of speech is what all those brave men, women, boys and girls really fought for. Of all colours, all religions, they fought to stop the Nazi jackboot from going down your head. And what we're doing, we're allowing governments to create a police state where they dictate what's right, what's wrong. Shocking. So now you know what was going through my head for that minute on Armistice Day. <laughs> Thought I'd share it with you. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.